Hey guys, so another video where I'm going to be talking about books again because I've been watching a ton of booktube channels and I just want to talk about books so I'm going to talk about books again and I hope you like my new background. I put up some new photos so I hope you like it. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite contemporary books. Because I know that for most people, summer is the time where just you read the most contemporary romance. Or like, I know that a lot of people feel that way, and I feel that way. So, even though it's like, summer is getting to an end, it's not over yet. And I thought, you know, I can just share with you my favorite contemporary romance books. And... So that if you want to read contemporary romance, you know what to read, you know? And I don't have a half of the books with me, because either my friends have it or something, they're just not here, so... Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate, but I'm gonna put all the links to the books on Goodreads down below, so that you can check it out if you are interested. So let's just jump right into it, because I've been rambling long enough, so... So the first one I have is... Eleanor and Parry by Rainbow Rowell, and I feel like not enough people know about this book. It's just totally awesome, and it's about, like, Eleanor and Park, <laughs> who just slowly find a way to each other, and it's just a contemporary romance, but it's a really, really special one, and the characters are, like, so imperfectly perfect, and so quirky, and their relationship is so special, and just, like, they're life situations are in the easiest and I don't really know how to describe this book but it's just absolutely wonderful and brilliant and I think I would totally recommend this book to people who don't even read romance because it's just so special and beautiful. Next book is a book that I haven't heard anyone talking about and that is Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. Like I've heard people talking about Lauren Oliver but no one has ever talked about Before I Fall that I know of. And I think it's a shame, even though it's like probably not like a book that's like number one for me. It was a really nice book and I don't know if I rated it on Goodreads, but like I would definitely give it either four or five stars. Probably four, but it was just a really nice book and it's really special, I feel like. It's a very... it's not like contemporary romance. There is romance, a little tiny bit, but it's absolutely not the main thing. And it's just about a girl who dies basically and she relives her last day seven more times and it's just so interesting to watch her evolution like how she changes every day because just you know at first how like she's confused and she's like what the heck is happening like because she, she, she can see that it's the same day again and then it happens again and again and it's just a really interesting book and I really liked it and I I love when the characters really change a lot, you know, and she absolutely definitely changed and it was like a lot of imperfect characters, a lot of real things and like she was kind of a bitch at the beginning but you know, that was kind of the point and she was just a normal girl, you know, and yeah, I it's just a really really great book and I suggest you go read it because it's really really good. <laughs> Next two books that I got here is If I Stay and Where She Went by Gail Foreman and I'm kind of pretty sure that If I Stay happens in winter which if you're like me you probably don't want to read that in summer because it's like reading summer books in winter is fa it's kind of weird for me but it's like I don't know it's fine but reading winter books any time of the year that's not winter is like really weird but Still, I don't know, it's a really great contemporary romance and you don't have to read it now, you can read it in winter or whatever. And if you read this already but haven't read this, I suggest you go read this because this is not a wintry book at all. And I don't know, I I haven't watched any reviews on this but when it comes to me, I really liked it and I actually think that I maybe liked it even more than if I stay, not sure, but it's like a very different thing because it's like... It's not the same like if I say at all, but it's really, really nice and I just liked both of them and yeah, you should definitely go read it if you haven't already. The next book I have here is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven and this is like what I was looking at my bookshelf thinking which books should I like put in the video. I was like, should I put this one there? Because to be honest... I absolutely loved the story and this whole book, but I hated the ending. I think it's 
like worth reading it even though the ending sucked but yeah I don't know I just really liked this book a lot and it's about a boy who's like who has suicidal thoughts and who basically is just depressed and all that and then a girl who just lost her sister and so she's not in a good place either and they just meet and like Finch the guy is like a very weird character who doesn't have many friends and isn't popular and Violet is like this popular girl who's like normal and all that so that's all that also makes their relationship much more interesting and yeah, it's it's so nice to see how their relationship evolves and how they kind of like change each other and make the bad times easier if you if it makes any sense and just look for the bright places, you know. It's just such a beautiful book and I feel like again, not that many people talk about it and yeah, but I yeah, I don't know. Like I suggest you check this out, but be prepared the ending pissed me off so much. The last book, not in this video, but the last book that I have in the book form, which sucks because I love holding the books and like showing them to you, which sounds ridiculous, but it's just, I love it. But anyway, it's The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen uh, Bosky, don't know how to pronounce his last name, and I know this, this is definitely not a book that no one talks about because just, it's like very um, popular, but I mean, it's kind of old, I don't know when it was published, but yeah. But I totally suggest you go read this because it's such a special, extraordinary book and in case you don't know what it's about, it's about Charlie who's a freshman and he's just a really special character who's gone through a lot and he writes this in a like a diary form. He always writes like, dear friend, blah 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 and like the date and everything so yeah. My sister told me that she doesn't like this but I absolutely love like doesn't like the way it's probably it probably has a name but just doesn't like the diary form uh, kind of books but I absolutely love that so I just adore this book because it's just so special and he's such a special character and all the characters there are like so quirky and imperfect and just real and awesome and I totally love when the characters are real and when the books are like real and whatever realistic whatever you want to call it and this book is just totally awesome and even the movie is great, so I suggest you go read this and then watch the movie, and uh, yeah. And then moving on to the books that I don't have here, hopefully I'm not gonna forget any of those. Uh, the first one is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Yeah, I totally love Rainbow Rowell, and uh, you should totally read her contemporary books, because they're awesome. Fangirl is just about a girl who is, again, very, like, imperfect and real. And she has a twin sister and they they were completely like best friends, they did everything together. And now they're going to college and the main character's twin sister is like, no, I want to like, I don't want to be with you as much anymore, like I want to go out and meet new friends and meet new people and all that. So she kind of like bails on her, uh, bails on Kath, who is the main character. And so, like, Kath really has to step out of her comfort zone and meet new people, and she's, like, really shy and a complete introvert, so, like, it's something really, it's just really uncomfortable for her, but it's, like, it's such a wonderful story, and she just, like, she writes fan fiction, and she is an amazing character that I really, like, related with, and... The whole book was really, like, relatable and so real, which is something I absolutely love about Rainbow Rowell's books, that her characters are just so awesome and so real, and yeah, so just that's pretty much what I would say about the story, and it's just a really amazing book, and it's just so special, and yeah, it's a really easy read, and you should totally go check that out, because it's absolutely wonderful. Next book that I would totally recommend is Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Levithan. I mean, everyone talks about John Green's books, you know, and you think about contemporary romance and you like John Green, you know, but I feel like Will Grayson, Will Grayson is a book by John Green that no one talks about and they definitely should because it's like my favorite, my totes absolutely favorite. Like, I totally loved The Fault in Our Stars too, but... This one, I think I like it even more because it's so extraordinary and it's about two guys and one of them is written by John and the other one is written by David 
and they are both called Will Grayson and one of them is like this normal guy who's just like who has like just normal friends and who goes to school and whatever just like really just normal someone who we totally like know in our lives just someone like normal. <laughs> and then the other one is like a bit more weird or however I should call it, which is totally not like, which is totally like a compliment. He suffers from depression and he's gay, which I totally I like, yay! Because <laughs> he's the main creator, you know, I'm totally excited when the main creator is gay, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so they just, it's about how they find like how their paths cross when they have completely different lives and romance is involved too and not between them but um, between some of the characters and yeah it's just a really awesome book and it's just so special and I absolutely love the characters they're absolutely amazing and I totally love the way David Levithan writes it and in case you are not a fan of multiple point of views I don't understand why or like I totally love that and if you are like afraid of getting lost in the story especially because both of them are called Will don't be afraid of that because David Levithan doesn't write capital letters so all of them are small I forgot the name and yeah, so that, like, even visually, you can just, like, see, okay, this is this will and this is this will, if you know what I mean. So that's totally chill and don't worry about that. And, yeah, I don't know what else I would say about the story. It's just really awesome and extraordinary and I absolutely love the way John and David write it and it's totally, um, it's a must read. So, go read that. Yeah, go read it, go read it, go read it. So, I maybe forgot some of the books that I didn't have with me, but that's okay. I think I recommended quite a lot of them, so definitely go check those books out. Hope you like it, and let me know if you'd like, like, a fantasy edition. If I should do just, like, what fantasy books I recommend. Or I'm planning to do a non-fiction recommendation video, but probably not anytime soon, because there are... A lot of non-fiction books that I want to read but I haven't read them yet so I want to do that so let me know if you would like to see that one day and I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah I'll see you in the next one and have a wonderful day bye Ooh.